Hi kids, it's Atlas again, um, as you can tell by Man at Arms Paul on the mat here. So uh, I'm in New York with Gabe. Hello. Hello, and uh, we're I'm doing giving you a Blade Wing deck profile. If you remember from months and months ago when we had Blade Wings before, where Tiger Yeager hit the scene in English. So now we do. So it's time for an update. Uh, so the starter is still uh, Werf Later Ordinaz. He's uh, I don't know. I nothing was able to replace it. Uh, Durang Singular is better in Darkness, but his skill is you can uh, act GB1, Counterblast 1, Shove and Soul, Soul Charge 2, and then if you have 6 after you do that, you draw a card. Um, so this is mostly used on your Demigod turn because that's plus 3k to your front row and a draw to replace himself. Uh, it's usually a target for starter killing, but uh, it's not the worst thing in the world, but still, best starter, Blade Wings 2017. Uh, grade 3s are 4 copies of Blade Wing Sullivan. So uh, his skill is uh, when you ride, you pick a rear guard, uh, grab up to three copies of that from the deck and put it in your soul. And then uh, his other skill is if you have 15 or more cards in your soul, when... Um... Yeah, you, just keep, you keep going, you're good. You're good. Okay. Uh, if you have 15 or more cards in your soul, all of your guardians get plus 10k shield, which is uh, awesome. And then the other skill is if you have 15 or more cards in soul at the end of each battle, you soul blast two. So he is a self-defeating card this this card is basically gave as vanguard card how because you're constantly like berating yourself he's, he's constantly like self undermining but he defends people he defends yeah but he's also he's, super edgy so yeah game that's miles <laughs> fuck off <laughs> anyway so um the cool thing about this uh, effect is he you can filter your soul of triggers that you soul charged earlier in the game and then those come into play later with uh, the g deck which i'll get to in a bit um, and then, uh, yeah, he, this is the only grade three you run because this is the only thing you want to be on. Some people run one or two copies of the new Sharhat grade three. I did try that for a while, but, uh, I valued my grade twos and stuff more. G assisting doesn't hurt that bad because of, uh, another card, which I'll get to later. So this is the card you want to be on. If you don't draw it in your opening hand, I recommend aggressively mulliganing it for it. Um, on the grade twos, one copy of Tragic Claw. So, uh, the, if you, if Vanguard Circle, if you put something in the same column as it, you can Soul Charge, so that includes riding on top of it, which is cool. If you ride Sullivan and you do your search for three and then Soul Charge, that's pretty nice. His other, her other skill is, uh, GB1 Darkness. When something's put in the same column as her, if you have ten or more, she gets boost, and if you have fifteen or more, she gets 2k. So, that's pretty cool, uh, on your Demidog turn, you can pull out Assassins in front of her to get a Soul Charge. And then also, um, you know, she can boost on, like, the last attack. So, you, like, if you're just over 15, you can keep your numbers up with this. Um, four copies of Bladewing Sykes. Uh, I know some Japanese lists got rid of him, but uh, having another clone target for Sullivan is really good. So uh, you can put him from soul to drop if you have a Bladewing Vanguard soul charge, too. And then uh, when he's called, if you have a Bladewing Vanguard that can include himself, you get a soul charge. So... Uh, he's useful no matter where you put him, except for damage. Uh, let's see, four copies of Flying Librarian. Um, so her skill is GB1, you counter one call, counterblast one, soul charge two. If you have six or more, what was it again? Uh, six or more draw a card and then ten or more unflip the, the damage you just did. So she is a self-refunding card, so you, you can replace the card you just uh, got out of your hand by calling her, and then you also unflip the damage you just counterblasted. So... This is most of your Soul Charge engine, and yes, she's an 8k, but it literally doesn't matter, so... God, the eyes have some weird card names. What, Flying Librarian? Or... Tragic Claw, yeah. Flying Librarian... Uh, this one I'm pretty sure is just misspelled. Three copies of Demonted Executioner, and... Edgy. I'm sure they meant Demented. So, uh, on call, you check top seven, look for a card with darkness, and put it into your soul. So, what you're probably going to be putting in here is Enigmatic Assassin or Were Tiger Jaeger. Or the perfect guard, but uh, the fact that you can put anything in there is very flexible. And then the other skill is darkness. You can counterblast one. If you have six or more, it gets 2k. Then if you have ten or more, it gets 3k. So uh, if you have weird numbers, you can put this up to 11 or 14 so you can hit vanguard. Um, some people run covetous succubus in this position, but I think uh, being able to choose what you're putting into your soul is very nice. Um, until like something bad happens to me in which case i'll probably change it because things do happen to me so um four copies of dimension creeper 
So this this is uh, very much a staple. Uh, you can put them from your soul to your drop zone to soul charge too. Plain and simple. Uh, it lets you make your demagog turn huge. Two copies of uh, Succubus of Pure Love. So she's the original stride fodder. Um, people are wondering why only two, because we're doing this. Four copies of Where Tiger Jaeger. So this made the deck from interesting to insane. Uh, it's got three still. The first one is when he's uh, put into your soul during your turn by cost or effect, so anytime. You can counterblast one and draw a card. So if you soul charge this by accident, you can just get a free draw. Yay. Uh, he's also got two other skills. The first one is you counterblast one, drop a card. If you have six or more in soul, you soul charge. Then if you have ten or more, you pull them back to your hand. So why would I need them in my hand? The other skill is if you have two or more cards with the darkness ability in your soul, read all the time, uh, he's a stride fodder. So we, ha we now have six stride fodders, which is also why we don't really run higher numbers of grade threes. Um, He's, uh, this single-handedly made the deck good, basically. Um, it's a rare. The set will go out of print eventually, so if you think you're going to build DIs any time in the future, go get a playset now. Um, one copy of Doreen the Thruster. Uh, my friend suggested this to me to make the Demigod turn crazy, uh, because every time a card's put into your soul during your main phase, she gets plus 3k. Honestly, I never draw her when I need to, like, you know, one out of maybe eight games but this is a tech slot that you can run whatever the hell you want so i've just been doing this in the meantime uh other cards you can put in here are like another stride fodder another perfect guard uh another wear tiger no uh just basically anything i i've played around with a lot of stuff in this slot so have fun uh lastly two copies of the darkness perfect guard why Atlas? Why? Because uh, Sullivan gives you guard bonuses on everything, and oftentimes I don't need for perfect guard. The other skill is uh, GB1 Darkness. You can sack off a grade 1 or higher rare guard, so like the Dimension Creeper you called to soul clone with Sullivan, you can pull it back to your hand. So, because you're soul charging so much, this is available pretty much all the time. I, I, I've had like so much guard ability that I oftentimes will just guard with her without using the skill, and because of Sullivan, she's a 10k shield, so yeah. Um, some people will run, th I, had, I had her at 3 for a while, um, if you really want to, you can run 4, but honestly, it is literally not necessary. Um, on to the grade zeros. 4 copies of Enigmatic Assassin. So this makes the deck go. Uh, she's got a uh, darkness ability. Uh, at the beginning of your attack step, so what that means is when something is about to attack. Uh, you can pull her out of your soul if you have uh, 10 or more cards, and then if you have 15 or more, and she gets 5k. Then if you have 15 or more after that, she gets plus 10k. So uh, she can be a 10 or 20k attacker or booster, and that's what I meant by attack step. So you can pull this out behind your vanguard and boost with it, so it's a 10 or 20k booster. Um, it is pretty much the only thing keeping Gilderai alive right now, because Gilderai kind of got killed by uh, G-Guards because having a 66 or a 56k Gilderai is pretty nutso. Um, oftentimes what you're going to be doing is uh, you're going to be soul charging as many of these as you can on your demigod turn, and then once you attack with your two rear guards, pulling them out back and forth and attacking for insane numbers. So that's uh, up to seven attacks over, you know, like over 20, like four of them are over 20k. So it's nothing to sneeze at. Um, it's also what make the, made the numbers so weird, because most of the grade 3 cuts were made to make room for these. <clears throat> uh, four copies of a heal trigger, because it's, it's, a, it's a deck that does things. Um, when you, uh, when you G-Guard for the specific one, you can put it into your soul, so that's helpful, uh, with Sullivan. Um, one, one critical. I see a lot of Japanese lists running, like, seven stand, five crit, but uh, I like having the one crit just to fuck with people, because if you see just the one, then people are thinking, mm, it's been at least one in there. Wait, you only have one? What the fuck? Literally one crit, yeah. That's, that a guy keep fucked me up in our games. Jeez, I could have taken it at four. Wow. Yeah. If, 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 like, if, like, I've had it at up to four, down, like, people keep telling me to put it at zero, but I like it just for the mind games. Um, Fair enough. And it has come in handy before. Four copies of the cat. Uh, Monochrome of Nightmareland. This is uh, the reason you can play so many aggressively counterblasting cards. So the skill is GB1, put it back in deck, shuffle, 
Soul Charge. If you have six or more, you draw a card. Then if you have ten or more, and flip a damage. So she's kind of like Flying Librarian. Um, but the important thing is you, you, like, I've done the skill and then just drawn into this so you can do it again. Um, and it's three, like, a lot of DI lists you will run four of these just because you counterblast a lot. Um, there are also two copies of Where Cats Are Recruits. So, for some reason, DI loves cats. Uh, it's GB1 Darkness. It gets, uh, plus 5k shield and plus 5k power, so... If you happen to use a G-Guard on your turn, this is a, a, a G-Guard by itself. It's 15k shield. And then the other skill is at the end of the battle, if you guard with it, if the attack didn't hit, you put it into your soul. Um, so what's interesting with this is you this procs after Soul of Soul Blast 2. So if you have 16 in soul, and then you Soul Blast, you're down to 14, and you guard with this on that attack, you can put it back in so you get one more soul of the end of the deal. Um, so that's the reason people run this, and also because you can just turn this into a 9k attacker sometimes more if you are on your demagogue turn um if you are uncomfortable with that many uh stands turn these into crits if you really want to but i don't think it's a good idea um four copies of hysteric shirley so her skill is uh on rear guard you can put her in soul and soul charge one so does her job as a draw trigger and then one more draw trigger also um so because you are so aggressively playing from your hand, draw triggers help you not die and get cards you need to soul charge and do all your other stuff. Normally this would be deck out bait, but uh, you, got, you got the stride deck, which I'll get into in a second here. So it's actually kind of necessary to run draws. And also your uh, 5Ks become 15K shields with Sullivan still, so it's not a defensive liability at all. Onto the G deck. We have one copy of, uh, what was the full name? Great Demon, Soulless Demigod. So his skill is during your main phase, every time a card is put in your soul, he gets all the cards in your front row get plus 1k. So uh, the first time I saw this card, I was like, well, that sucks. You only get 1k. And then I realized there's no once per turn on this. So every time you soul charge during your main phase, your front row is getting 2k, 3k, 4k, 8k, 26k. Um, and then also because the skill is on him, stuff that appears afterward like enigmatic assassin uh are huge so this is typically the first stride you're going to go into because it can otk very consistently um or at the very least it can cripple your opponent because seven attacks coming out at over 30k is nothing to sneeze at so uh great card four copies of uh wings of annihilation uh, uh, wings of annihilation blade wing tippled so uh his skill is when you stride him if you have a blade wing heart put your drop zone back in your deck if you have less than 15 cards soul charge five and then if you have 15 or more cards he gets red text all of your rear uh, front row rear guards get plus 10k so again this is the similar skill of demigod where if assassins come out afterward they also get the plus 10k but the important thing is this keeps you from decking out and can help you soul charge like if you had a bum like set of early turns you can just get soul charge five and uh, also the important thing is because uh, Sullivan can soul blast out triggers, you can just put them back with this, and now you have a deck full of triggers. So pretty nice, and helps you not die. Um, one copy of One Steeped in Sin, Sharhat. So uh, GB2, Darkness. On attack, you uh, counter blast one, put all your rear guards into your soul, and then it gets uh, plus 10k. If you have, what was it, 10 or more? Um... Yeah, if it's 10 or more, you blow up your opponent's field, and then if it's 15 or more, your opponent can't draw the Sentinels. So oftentimes, you're going to be using this to finish, uh, where you can also, like, a deck like the Paladins or uh, something that needs a field around, uh, it, it, can hurt, it, it can hurt them if you time this right. Um, there's Like, I used to have two in here, but because we have other better options now, uh, you got dropped to one. Um, you're not always going to finish with this, but uh, it is definitely one way to do it. Two copies of One Who Splits Darkness, Blader Mouse. Okay. Gabe, what's your major again? Uh oh. You don't you don't have one yet? Alright, so I mean like right now I'm like general humanities, liberal studies. Okay, cool, good uh, close enough. So I don't get why they didn't didn't just call it darkness splitter. Like one who splits darkness is passive voice and that pisses me off. It sounds edgy and artistic. He's like Edgar Allan Poe. That's why. Oh boy. I was reading a lot of Poe recently, that's why. But. Yeah. Alright, so uh, his skill is once per turn, GB2, Darkness. You counterblast one, flip up a copy, choose up to two cards from your hand, put them in your soul. If you have ten or more, you may pay the cost. If you do, 
put all your uh, grade zero uh, cards from your soul and rear guard circle back to your deck. Give two cards plus 5k, and then at the end of the battle, stand this with drive minus two. So uh, this is another way to finish, and it's also another way to not die, because you can put all of your grade zeros back in deck. Yes, that includes the starter and enigmatic assassin, but you're typically going to do this uh, if you um, just, like, if, if you know your opponent has uh, not a lot of perfect guards and multi-attacking is better. Um, the fact that you can power up a rear guard too is pretty nice, but the you do have to soul blast differently to get the most use out of this with Sullivan. So if you know you're going to, you know, be going into this, I, soul blast out your grade twos, grade threes, all that stuff. So you can put all your traders back. Um, this has better usage in the darkness deck, but it's still very good in here. Um, Let's see, two copies of Gilderai. Uh, I barely use this anymore. Uh, you act G-Flip. If, uh, if you have uh, 10 or more, he gets 10k. If you have 15 or more, he gets uh, no great ones or higher. And then if you have uh, two or more cards face up in G-Zone after where he gets the crit. So um, or I'm sure I mixed those up, but I don't feel like reading it at the moment. Just pause and read it if it matters. Um, so this used to be your finisher, but G-Guards made this way easier to block. So... You're going to use this if you sense a moment of weakness. I typically use it as G-Assist fodder. Is that sad? It's a little sad. Um, but, uh, yeah. This thing is a lot better in the Amon deck, where you can just use the Barmaid to make it an absurdly high number where G-Guards aren't going to matter. But uh, otherwise, it's 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 on its way out the door. Um, if you don't want to bother finding it, go go buy two more Blader Mouse. Easy. Um, let's see. One copy of the Jabate. So his skill is GB8. Uh, is it all of your front row or all of your units? Front row. It's uh, all your units in the front row get 13k and a crit for every 13 cards in soul. I get it because 13 is bad luck. Um, That's fucking bad. <laughs> really, honestly, you're never going to hit the 26, 26 mark. But if it's that late in the game, the 13 and a crit on everything, including the assassins, is probably enough to finish. Um, hey, well, heck, you forgot about that card. I know. It's it, it's such a terrible GB8, but... It's, I love how the yeah. only good, like, Dark Zone GB8 is the Spike Brothers one. Oh, no, the Pale Moon's pretty good, too. Yeah. yeah. It's all right. Uh, two copies of Adra Bat Malat. Weird name. Uh, so it's you... Jewish, fun fact. Really? I can't remember what it is. It's from um, uh, Jewish lore in Kabbalah. Neato. All right, so uh, when you Darter through, you Soul Charge 2. If you have uh, six or more in Soul after you do that, plus 5k shield. The important thing is that you can use this with Blade Wing Sullivan to stave off the going under 15. Um, also is a good first few guard and stuff. So, good few guard. One copy of the Flippy One. So, uh, what's his full name? It's uh, Medical Studies of Extinction Vincent. That's weird. Uh, so, when, when you, GB1, when you guard, flip something. He's soul charge one, and then for every five cards in soul, he gets a uh, 5k shield. So typically you're going to be using this uh, as a 41k shield. I, I really don't use it as like an acceleration for GB8 because that's not really a good GB8 to be accelerating to. But, you know, it's fine. Um, being a 51k shield with Blade and Sullivan is nice because you get the heal back in soul in this, so that's soul charge two. So again, that can stave off your uh, going under 15. Um, one copy of Nighttime Gentleman St. Germain, who... Oh my god, okay. This is edgy in so many ways, and also, the picture looks like... I, know, I, I, don't I love see it. dark irregular names. I know. Okay, so the skill is, uh, you, um, if you have 10 or more, he gets plus 10k shield, and then if you have 15 or more, you can pick any number of cards and give them resist. So, that includes Guard Circle, which means if you're playing against Dimension Police and you have over 15 cards in soul, you can throw a bunch of stuff at it, and they, they can't guard break you. <laughs> um... I, I don't typically go into this much. It's usually the flip target for Vincent, but uh, it's still pretty good G-Guard. And then lastly, the new one we got in the new set. Uh, I should probably read my cards before the deck profile. Cryptid Na Liege Sabnak. That's my favorite name. That's amazing. Best name. <laughs> so, Sabnak. All right, so his skill is Counterblast 1. If you have 10 or more cards in soul, he gets uh, 5k shield, and then your Vanguard gets plus 5k until end of turn, which means... If you're playing against, like, Time Leap or something, you can stop Melum on the first attack, and then they can't Melum you for the rest of the turn, because you're 16k shield. Uh, I It's really freaking good. Um, I took out the second uh, St. Germain for this, so I would definitely run it instead of two Germain, like, no question. Uh, Counter Blast, again, is not really an issue with the cat and everything refunding itself. So, yeah, that's the deck profile. Uh, hope you liked it. Rate, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next time.